Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 41. And today we're going to review basic SQL, and I want to talk about W3Schools. Now, the one thing I really love to do, and you guys know this about me, is toot other people's horns. When someone's done something really great on the web, and you should go there and look at it, it should be talked about. And W3School is a fantastic site. So make sure you visit this website, www.w3schools.com. And they have tons of free tutorials on just about every topic that would deal with basically web building and the back end like ASP, PHP, SQL, and more. Now it's not video, but it is uh, great text references. Uh, they can offer some certificates. Uh, they have examples and tutorials. So I really highly suggest this. And actually in today's lesson, as we go through SQL, I'm going to reference their site and actually show you some of their examples. So fantastic site. Uh, let me just toot the horn again. It's a great place to go, and I love stuff like this. If you go to the web and you type in a PHP command, typically two examples are going to come up, php.net and w3school. So it just shows how popular they are and what a great thing they've done because guess what? It's all free, and you just can't beat that. Hey, thanks a lot, w3schools. We really appreciate it. So there you have it. I've tooted their horn, and, and make sure you visit the site. It will be well worth your time. So we're looking at basic SQL commands today. So what is SQL? It is the standard language for accessing databases. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it's not pronounced SQL, but you'll hear me pronounce it SQL. And the reason I do that is because I'm from the military, and we're always taking acronyms and making names out of them. But the correct uh, way to pronounce it is SQL, not SQL, but I will continue to say SQL, and sometimes SQL. Uh, so that's just me, and uh, if you're under fire in the battlefield, you're going to say SQL because because it's human readable. Okay, let's come along here and what can SQL do for you? Well, you can use it to execute queries. Uh, you can retrieve data from a database. You can insert records. You can update records. You can delete records. You can create records. Da 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 da. All of that stuff and more. And you're going to hear me say the term from time to time called CRUD. And CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. And these are the basic operations to be performed. So you need to understand those basics when you start working with databases. But yet there are tons and tons of SQL commands and functions which can really help you do a lot with databasing. And it will be well worth your time to learn this. I mean, every once in a while I get an email saying, come to our database training $1,000 a day. Look, you don't need to pay $1,000 a day to learn SQL programming. It is just a table on the web. So spend some time on W3Schools, watch my videos, and learn to do it on your own, and you'll be so much more of a powerful programmer. And so it's great to have classes, but don't let someone take an arm and a leg from you to, to teach them, okay? Especially when there's so much free information on the web. So what I have here is titled SQL, DML, and DDL. What is that? SQL can be divided into two parts, basically, and, and that is data manipulation language and data definition language. And so when you come with a data manipulation language, you come to those commands like select and update, delete, and insert into. And that's your CRUD, basically, right there is to create, update, delete, and read. Uh, below that, we have the... Uh, data definition language. Now we haven't really gotten into a lot of this because we're using PHP my admin to do this. And so from my perspective, I've got to create a database. Uh, I'm not going to type it into command line using these commands. I'm using PHP my admin. But there's going to come a time sometimes that you're going to need that. But what I'll do is I'll just go to PHP my admin and have that print out the code for me automatically that I need for these commands. So we won't be paying a lot of attention to these commands right now. And if you need to know more information about them, just go to W3Schools. It's got a whole documentation on them. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go down through a number of these commands and just treat them step by step and explain to you how they work. And once we're done with this kind of reference approach, we're going to go to the coding and start putting those in our MySQL improved commands. So let's start off with the select command. The so select command is used to select data from a database. And the result is stored into a result table called a result set. So here's how it's set up uh, programmatically. You've got to select column names and from the table names. And so here's an example right here. You've got a little star here, which means you're going to select all the columns from a specific table. So let's just start off with a specific example. We have a table called persons, and this comes directly from W3Schools. And that has an ID. We've already talked about what that is. A last name, first name, address, and city. So we've already set all this stuff in PHP my admin. So if you want to go ahead and set this table up in PHP my admin, go ahead. Now let's go ahead and just take a look at how we might actually work with this table and the select command. 
So in this particular instance, I'm not using an asterisk or star. I'm going to actually list the actual column names themselves. So if I say, go ahead and select the last name and first name from persons, which means go select the last name column and the first name column from persons and send that into a result set. So when you do that, you're going to run the select command on this particular table. And what comes back is the last name and the first name of that table. So in this example we use the actual last name and first name column labels and we're able to select the last and first name uh, columns and that seems pretty logical when it comes to a result set but here's one that may not seem sensible to you at first and that's just when you use the wildcard that selects all columns and what happens when you select all columns? Well basically you just return all columns. So if you run this command select uh, wildcard with this is star from persons you'll just get the same thing back. So you might go well that doesn't make a lot of sense does it? Well we're going to find out there's another command called where that's going to enable us to filter those columns. So just hang on for a moment and you're going to see how powerful this actually is. And many times you will find yourself using that wildcard. So let's move on. You can navigate the results set. And we already learned a little bit about this when we worked with array pointers. When you have a PHP array, you can actually move from place to place in the array using pointers. You have the same thing in SQL. You can actually move the uh, pointer to anywhere in the array set. And you have them move to first record, get record content, move to next record, and you've already seen these type commands before, so that should not be a surprise for you. Here's the select distinct. This allows you basically just to pull out a column. So let's go ahead and take a look how it works. The way the syntax goes, you just go select distinct, put the column names in there, and goes which table is coming from. This particular example, what we're going to do is look at, once again, look at our persons table, and we're just going to go select distinct city from persons, and it selects out the city column. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's get to the powerful where statement. The where statement allows us to filter records. And this is when the uh, all the good stuff starts to come out of MySQL. So the where clause is used to extract only records that fulfill the specific requirements or criteria. And the way that works is you have, once again, you have your select and your column names from what table you're going to be selecting from. And now you have this where column name operator value. Let me show you how that works just through this example. Once again, looking back at our persons table, and what we're going to do, we're going to select from the person's table using the star, which, which means we're going to look at all columns in the person's table. And we're going to select the row in that columns where in the city column you have the name Santas. And what you see when you run that command, you get all the column information back, each column, but you only have two rows returned. And that's where the city name is Santas. And that's how it works. And you're going to be using this particular command over and over again actually to filter tables. Uh, just a few things about quotes and text. SQL uses uh, single quotes around text values. Some uh, databases accept double. And when you have numerical values, you, you use no quotes at all. So let's go down and see a few examples of that. This would be correct when you filter it on the where using a first name equal Tove, and Tove is basically in single quotes. But in this particular case, when you had a text uh, search parameter and you didn't use quotes, that would be wrong. In this particular case, we actually use the year without quotes. That would be correct in the where statement, but if you use quotes, that would be wrong, unless that was a text uh, value. Uh, now let's take a look at uh, some of the possible operators with a where value. This is where it really becomes popular, because we saw the equal sign already, but you can use all types of things. You can use not equal. Now note that um, we've already seen as not equals for PHP is a uh, apostrophe equals, but you can see this operator less than or greater than actually is used for that instead. You can use greater than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, between an inclusive range, search for a pattern is like or in, if you know the exact value you want to return for at least one of the columns. So this is very, very powerful. And next time we're going to pick up with this discussion, and next time we're going to pick up this discussion using our logical operators and and or. So let's just review quickly what we've been through. We talked about if you go to W3 schools, how you can really find some great information. We've actually been stepping through a number of their simple tutorials on SQL to show you how the basic uh, ideas worked. We talked about was uh, DML, Data Manipulation Language, and DDL, Data Definition Language, in SQL. And we talked about the basic command select, select with a wildcard, what a result set was, the distinct command, the powerful where clause, using quotes around text and uh, no quotes around numbers and many of the operators that are allowed with the WHERE clause. And so what you're going to see was just a few basic SQL commands. You really have a lot of power with working with databases. And we'll continue with this next time. Thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.